always found vegetable gardens with nice orderly beds or rows dedicated to a single crop to be very beautiful. And this is precisely the kind of garden my family had when I was growing up and my wife and I had for many years. But this type of garden isn't only appealing to us humans, it's also very appealing to garden pests. If you think of it from the perspective of, say, a cabbage moth, what could possibly be better than a garden bed dedicated entirely to kale, collard greens, or cabbage? All of their favorites in one easy to find, convenient location where they can lay their eggs and their young can feed. And after we create this perfect environment for them, we then have to take measures to control them or possibly lose our crops. As is often the case, the answer to this dilemma lies in nature. Nature doesn't produce monocultures like those I just described. It produces polycultures, and polycultures are a great defense against pests. In a vegetable garden, creating a polyculture consisting of a wide variety of flowers and different species of vegetables interplanted in a single space will, as Jeff Lawton puts it, confuse pests. Our friend the cabbage moth will have a much more difficult time using its sense of smell to locate a kale plant if it is surrounded by marigolds, garlic, onions, and a wide variety of other unrelated veggies. So this weekend, when I finished planting this 8x4 bed, I did my best to confuse the cabbage moths and other pests. In addition to the garlic I planted last fall and the sugar snap peas I planted last weekend, this weekend I planted onions, lettuce, kale, arugula, mizuna, marigolds, beets, spinach, Swiss chard, giant red mustards, and napa cabbage, all in this 8x4 bed. I created furrows in the leaf mulch by brushing the leaves to the side and added homemade compost to the furrows. I took a handful of a wide variety of the seeds just mentioned and broadcast them in the compost. I also transplanted two kale plants in the leaf mulch with some compost. It's possible that I overplanted it in some areas, but that's fine. If I need to thin the bed, most of the plants can be harvested young, so nothing will go to waste. Finally, I planted onions in a few rows across the bed. Thinking back, I could have interspersed the onions more with the other crops, and probably will in the future. But at the time, I liked the idea of creating protective walls of onions. Going forward, I plan to continue refining this approach and doing my best to confuse garden pests, especially those pesky cabbage moths. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.